Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome again. Uh, this is the Cognita Consultancy. As you know that we continue our uh, educational webinars. This week, we are going to host the Ireland and education in Ireland. We have uh, very valuable guests uh, from the students and as well as the universities. So uh, as we do all the time, we'd like to give a brief information about the Con Cognita Consultancy for those who has uh, never heard about the Cognita. Cognita Consultancy is a consultancy agency which is operating in the main in uh, East Africa, uh, Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda, and Ethiopia. But we have got also a partner, uh, I mean, another branch in UK as well as Ukraine. So we are trying to expand our network uh, with the, some agreements with the other countries as well. So the Cognita Consultancy is the consultancy which is giving the consultancy services to the students of those countries uh, about the study opportunities abroad. Which countries usually which we are working with? We have a very broad network of the agents and the universities and the, we have a lot of agreements with the universities uh, in different countries of the world like UK, uh, Canada, US, Ukraine, India, Malaysia, South Africa, as well as the Poland and the Germany. So among those opportunities, among those alternatives for the students, depending on their interest, depending on their uh, target, we would like to give them the proper consultation and information and help their application processes, as well as visa consultation, which we try to give them for them to get their visas smoothly without any problem and get their university for their studies. Uh, on top of this, we also give the students, those who has not yet graduated from the high schools about the college readiness for their career, uh, career counseling and the career readiness. For many of the students, as you know, that they uh, Sometimes they don't make their mind yet what they, which course they are gonna study in the university and what they wanna be. In this uh, case, we also give them the career tests for them to get their skills, cap uh, capabilities and motivations to guide them which subjects they are, uh, they are supposed to take in the A-level studies. Also, which course will be suitable for their uh, skills abilities, maybe interests as well. So we have, uh, as I have mentioned, we have six branches currently, UK, Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, Ethiopia, and Uganda. So in this presentation, uh, we can see the, our contact numbers. You can reach to our consultancy agents and the representatives in those countries uh, by using the country name like Tanzania at cognitaconsultancy.com. We can, you can also access to our webpage and uh, to get a more further information, you can also text to us through our WhatsApp numbers as well. Feel free to contact and ask the questions all the time. So for today, we are going to start with Mr. Burak from Education in Ireland. They are, they are our partners in Ireland. Uh, he's gonna, give us a presentation about the study opportunities in Ireland. Mr. Brock, welcome. Uh, thank you, Mr. Ahmed. So I am going to share my screen. Okay, good. Now his mic is yours. Okay, so everybody see my screen? Hello, everybody from beautiful Ireland. I would like to start my presentation with a, like a very short and um, 60 seconds video for Ireland. Thank you. 
guys enjoyed the video, guys. Um, so let me share. Okay, so my name is Burak. I'm originally from Turkey. I have been living in Ireland over the past 11 years. Currently, I am Turkish and Irish citizen. Uh, I am here with my three friends. Uh, Jem is a former student at Dublin City University. He's going to share his own experience as a student. And we have Michael from NCI National College of Ireland and Arnold from Technological University Dublin. Okay, so basically I would like to go through um, with my own journey with you and talk about the education opportunities in Ireland while I'm also giving information about Ireland, why you need to choose Ireland, the bachelor programs, how to start, your application, top universities, popular programs, how to apply and available scholarship programs. I'm an industrial engineer. I graduated in Turkey. After completing my bachelor degree, I went to UK, uh, England to improve my English. Then I decided to go for a master degree. Uh, it was my first time to be honest, like start hearing more about Ireland. I'm sure you may not know like maybe more about Ireland as well. I visited the country a couple of times while, while I was studying in UK and then I love the country and I decided to complete my master degree in Dublin. I had my MBA at Griffith College, one of the private colleges uh, in Ireland. And I'm the co-founder of Education State and I wrote the business plan for my company and uh, the consultancy company while I'm doing my master's degree. One of my lecturers, uh, Michael Flynn, who is currently head of MBA in Trinity College, Dublin, advised me to establish a business where I can share my own knowledge, own experience. Of course, my journey started with applying an Irish visa. I'm sure you will also need to apply for a visa as well. So it was very difficult to get visa in 2009. So it took two months for them to review my application. And unfortunately, my visa was refused at the beginning. And I appealed the decision, waited for another two months and luckily got my visa and my adventure started in Ireland. So this process is luckily way easier at the moment. Um, usually it takes uh, like a two to three weeks um, to uh, review your uh, visa. And um, I'm sure it will be way more easier for you. So basically, um, so this was a great uh, learning experience for me. And uh, I need to, to uh, I decided to establish education state where I can share my own experience with international students. So let's a little bit talk about education state. So I established the company in 2010. We have offices in Dublin and Turkey, as well as partner offices in many countries. Cognita is one of our partners. So last year we brought uh, around 400 students to Ireland. We pretty much cover all the requests coming from our students, like including visa consultancy, accommodation arrangement, airport pickup. We provide welcome back to our international students. We assist them from our Dublin office with their queries while they study in Ireland. We organize different events. You will see some pictures on the right hand side and to strengthen our relationship with the students and try to basically stay close as much as we can. So basically my main goal is to make you feel guys like you are not alone in Ireland. So you can see some pictures here and just to let you know our visa success rate was 98% in, um, in, uh, in last year. So let's talk about a little bit Ireland. So the island is located at the westernmost edge of Europe. 80% of the island belongs to Republic of Ireland, whereas 20% belongs to UK, United Kingdom. The island has a huge history. The current population is uh, 4.8 million and almost like 2 million uh, people live in the capital, which is Dublin. We use a uh, Euro currency. And there are two official languages in Ireland, English and Irish but only the minority speaks Irish. To be honest, I, I, I haven't heard any like Irish speaking on the streets since I'm in the country. And um, the climate of Ireland is uh, like a mild winter and cool summers. So it's consistently humid and 
orchestra about half the time, but there is no truth in the stories that it rains every day. So even though that there can be like lo lots of clouds or sometimes rain, the weather can change fast in Ireland. Like, uh, like one moment there's a lot of fog and the next uh, the sun is shining brightly. So the fast changing weather belongs to Ireland basically. Okay, so why Ireland? So Ireland is a small, highly global, globalized economy with a large exporting sector and significant number of multinational corporations, companies. Big IT companies choose Ireland as their European headquarter. So this can be a great opportunity for you guys when you graduate. So basically Facebook, Google, Microsoft, and like many others have their offices in Dublin. And Ireland is the only English speaking country in the Eurozone. As a student, you are eligible to work part time. So, this is a great opportunity. A minimum hourly wage is 10.10 .10 euro. So, basically, you can earn like 800 to 1000 euro per month uh, working part time, and which will be sufficient enough to cover your monthly expenses so we can say like a, a student's monthly expenses is like from like based on like how much you spend from like 500 to 900 or 800 euro while ireland is a dynamic lovely and modern country with a young population and a successful technologically oriented economy it also remains the country's uh, the culture and tradition where music conversation, making friends matters. So Ireland is renowned uh, for its beautiful and unspoiled countryside and scenery. You can see lots of green fields, a forest and castles. Ireland is also considered um, to be friendly and safe country. And uh, it was voted by the Lon um, Lonely Planet magazine uh, as the world's friendliest country. And it was also ranked 12th uh, in the Global Peace Index. So it is safe and friendly. I'm sure you will see that like a warm welcome when you are here. And uh, another point is we have Ryanair. I don't know if you guys heard this, but it is a low fare airline company based in Ireland. So you can fly to London or any, uh, like any other European country with a very reasonable price. Like, 10 15 euro per journey so basically you can just fly to london for 15 euro and yes you can apply for uk visa or schengen visa and while you are in ireland okay now let's talk about the bachelor programs so ireland is the education destination for many international students i think there are around 35,000 international students in the country the usually and um, the bachelor programs takes three or four years for three years you get the ordinary bachelor degree and for the four years you get honor bachelor degree and as i mentioned earlier you have eligibility to work part-time to cover your monthly expenses and another great point is when you complete your bachelor degree you will have one year full-time work permit to basically uh, um, have a job opportunity, job experience in Ireland. And the annual fees start from 10,000 to 15,000. Uh, I don't know if you guys are interested in medicine. It is the most expensive program for the international student. It is over 30,000 euro um, per year and it takes uh, six years. And the most popular programs are information technology since there are so many IT companies here, engineering, chemistry, biomedical, business, and marketing are the other popular programs. And usually the last application date is end of July uh, for many universities. So the top universities we strongly recommend to our students are Technological University Dublin, National College of Ireland. We have two speakers from those universities today with you. Dublin City University, Jem is going to share his own experience. Griffith College, Minot University, IT Sligo and Dublin Business School. So how to start? Um, when you want to start your application, first you need to uh, research from the reliable sources. I'm sure Cognito will be the uh, very re reliable source for you to find out available options for you. And I will strongly recommend the employment situation about your area. 
So I put a website here, it's jobs.ie, you can see on the slide. So you can have a look at that website and available jobs uh, in your interest area. So you need to make your plan for after graduation. As I mentioned, you will have one year full-time work, uh, work permit opportunity. So I also strongly recommend that your degree area should be area that you are interested. So you will enjoy while you are studying. And of course, you will need to uh, show that you have um, uh, enough uh, English uh, competency. So if, uh, if you want to check what you can study in Ireland, basically you can go to educationireland.com and, and, and put the subject there and hit search and you will be able to see all the available uh, courses in your interest area. So how to apply? Of course, you need to submit some documents. We have a um, presentation, uh, the next slide, uh, have uh, more details about the documents. So I'll jump at this one. So basically you need to prepare your documentations first, contact with your counselor, pay the application fee if there is one. And usually the assessment by the universities may take four to six weeks. Some universities is even faster. So if you get the green light from the university, you will get your acceptance letter. Then you need to pay all the tuition fee for the first year. Then um, some universities may offer also installment as well. And then you will need to apply your visa. And when you get the visa, you, are, you will be welcoming you in Ireland, hopefully. So required documents, basically you need to put your high school diploma, graduation transcript, uh, English certificate, and intent letter. Uh, for the English language certificate, we have an um, uh, update. Since the pandemic has disturbed the work routine and regular admission function around all the international universities, there's a great news for the students who are planning to study in Ireland. Uh, if you don't have any IELTS or TOEFL score, and, and then uh, basically the Ireland Institute accept a Duolingo English test. It is the online computer-based testing system for measuring English proficiency for uh, non-native English speakers. It is a 60 minutes test where a student can appear anywhere with just having a computer and a decent internet connection. So then intent letter, which is very important, you need to explain why you want to study in Ireland, your dream and your CV to reference letter. And if you have any other like professional certificate which support your application uh, will be great. Okay, the next one is the scholarship uh, opportunities. So there are three options. The first one is Ireland government scholarship program. So the, the government provides the international students full or and partial scholarship. The students need to get conditional offer from the university first to apply the governmental scholarship opportunities. Usually the scholarship application process start like in March. So you may be kind of a little bit late for this one. The second one is universities partial scholarship. Like many universities are providing the scholar program, scholarship program to the international students. There have been some specific requirements, for example, like high GPA score uh, at the transcript and multi-language experience. So the scholarship amount are changing between 1000 euro to 3000 euro. And uh, African student scholarship, this is uh, Ireland Africa, Africa Fellows Program. I'm going to put the link into chat soon. And the aim of this and uh, the Ireland Africa Fellow Program are to basically to nurture future African leaders, women, men, and to develop in country capacity to achieve national SDG goals and to build positive relationship basically between Africa and Ireland. And eligible countries are Burundi, Erita, Ethiopia, Kenya, Malawi, Mozambia, Sierra Leone, Somalia, Sudan, Tanzania, Uganda, Zambia, and Zimbabwe. And eligible courses are basically certain areas like agriculture, health, education, human rights, computer science, engineering, business, and more. So when I share the link, you can definitely have a look at, at the um, and the the eligible courses. So this is end of my presentation. Now uh, I'm going to give the microphone to Jem. He is going to share 
his own experience as a student uh, at Dublin City University. Thank you, Brock. So let's see, let me share my screen. Oh, okay, let me go to the very top. So hello, everybody. Um, my name is Jem. I'm 26 years old. I have, um, so I spent some quite, quite a number of years already in Ireland. Um, I mean, I went to school there when I was a kid. Um, since the age of, I think, 10, I've been living in Ireland, but also my tertiary level education so um, has also been complete there. So I studied in DCU, in Dublin City University, as Barack already mentioned. And I've also studied in the National College of Ireland. And currently I'm working in um, Trivago. So currently I'm not in, actually Germ um, in, in Ireland, I'm in Germany right now, but I intend on returning back to Ireland. So I thought it'd be interesting to just um, give you some fun facts about Dublin. Um, it might lighten the mood and kind of you get to experience, like know some interesting thing, things about Dublin. So first of all, this is something, um, so I intentionally Googled because since coming here to, to Dusseldorf, I realized how um, um, in comparison, relatively speaking, how young um, the population in Dublin is. And a simple Google search actually also revealed this. So apparently, according to some, um, some, some news article, it's estimated that 50% of the city's res residents are actually under the um, age of 25, which is kind of quite interesting because it just means that there's a high chance that you'll meet a young person right between, under the age of 25. And it's nice for students because, you know, you won't hang out, right? So um, I intentionally put this up because oftentimes when, pe when people think of Ireland, um, there's a stereotype that people love to drink. And actually, I, I don't know how true this is really. I mean, when I, mean, I, I looked, I, I remember seeing a statistic um, about the, the liters of alcohol actually consumed per capita. And Ireland, I don't think it even, if I remember correctly, it doesn't even reach the top 10. So it's a bit of a stereotype, I would say. But um, nevertheless, there's quite a number of pubs. So there's one pub per 1,649 um, Dubliners. Um, but apart from that, the pub culture is very vibrant. And not only is it a place to, let's say, consume alcohol, but it's also um, a very popular social gathering for people. So, um, for example, I used to attend quite a lot of um, um, startup events or data analytics events, and a lot of them were actually held in, um, in pubs. So it's not just connotated with, let's say, consuming alcohol, but also a place where friends and also where business events could happen. Um, so this one, this one was quite interesting, I found. I wasn't aware of this, so um, we, I'm sure you know, we've all seen this lion. Um, apparently his name is Leo, and he was born in Dublin, in Dublin Zoo, um, which is, I don't know, I thought it was quite an interesting uh, fact about Dublin. Um, so there you go, this Leo the lion is from Dublin. Okay, so about me, again, um, yeah, so I completed my third level, my uh, bachelor's degree in DCU, in Dublin City University. This is the, the front of the campus. This is the main entrance. Um, so I did um, a bachelor's in business studies. Um, so it was like a four year degree. I did the um, so first year. So anyone who's thinking of studying business, you do quite a number of generic, let's say business uh, modules. So, so modules um, for, um, from many different disciplines of, of let's say the, the greater business studies program. So being finance, um, um, accountancy, marketing, HR, and I think management, yes, management as well. So first year's kind of spent doing a mixture of different um, um, uh, modules. And then eventually you, you become more refined, let's say, uh, defined even. So you, um, so I, I did at the end, um, I just specialized in marketing. So all my modules were kind of, um, yeah, focused in, in, in the field of marketing. Um, so let's see. So here's some interesting, um, let's say, facts also about DCU, Dublin City University. So as of 2020, university has 17,400 students and over 80,000 80, alumni. So people who've already attended uh, DCU, um, over 70% of our undergraduate students participate in an internship or study abroad as part of their bachelor degree. Um, this is actually really interesting. So because I also completed a, um, an exchange year. And um, I went to Berlin in my third year um, to study uh, one year there as part of my degree. And I remember when I went there, um, of course, I, I got to meet lots of different people from different countries. And apparently um, to be able to study an Erasmus year for many of these other students, it was like a, um, um, 
you had to you know have high grades and, and score quite well whereas in vcu it, it, actually the particular program that i did it was mandatory so everyone had to uh, actually to take a year out and study now you could you could choose not to but the pro but then your program would change so i did international business then it would become business but um yeah i, I thought i thought that was quite cool so um yeah it was it was part of the program um so let's see all these two master programs are full-time one year in duration again i think this is quite important uh for for a lot of people because i know in other countries it can be more than one year um so 20 percent of the students are international there's a very great international um, community in VCU. I would say I, I spent quite a lot of time with the um, uh, with, with international students uh, through the different societies that, that I was involved in. Um, so that's a lot of fun. Uh, let's see. So and then ninety percent of ninety two percent of graduates are employment employment or further study within six months of graduation. Um, yeah, this this uh, usually stacks up quite well, relatively speaking. So um, this is a few pictures of me while studying in college, just to give you kind of a, I guess, feeling of what it is like to study in DCU. Okay, so <laughs> two thirds of the pictures right are um, partying, and only one, one of them is uh, let's say more work related uh, or study related. Um, but yeah, uh, okay, there, there was there, there is a lot of partying, I would say, but um, it's I mean, it's part of the college experience, I would say. I mean, I mean at least in Ireland, uh, but. Um, yeah, so the first one is actually from a Christmas party in uh, in, in DCU stuff. So they did like this um, kind of Christmas party every year in their own campus. Um, then the second picture was a picture of me with my team. We it was for a module called New Enterprise Development, I believe it was called. And um, basically, we had to build a business idea and pre present to potential investors. And this was probably from the smile on our faces. Faces it was probably after the. Uh, the, the talk is we did we did quite well in that that uh, that module, or maybe it was before. No idea. But and then um, the third picture also it's I, I guess it's uh, yeah it's definitely a Halloween picture. I mean look all the blood on my t-shirt and everything. So yeah this this is definitely like a Halloween party, um, occasion party at um, at DC. So this is some pictures of my Erasmus year abroad. Um, so again as you can see I'm with large groups of people, um, and. I, for me, like I think mostly for many people, international exchange year programs is also what somewhat similar to this. Um, you, you end up spending, you end up meeting a lot of people from different nationalities. Um, so yeah, in the last, in the third photo here on the very right, you can see that we're having a massive dinner together. Um, we did this quite often actually. And in the middle one, I'm like skateboarding around the Berlin city. That was a lot of fun. And I think the one on the very left, we were visiting a um, nearby city, Potsdam. So yeah, so then um, what did I do then? So I, so I returned back to, to Dublin after my exchange year. I finished my final year and then um, I came back to Germany. I worked for another year and then I returned back to Dublin and I did a conversion degree. So just conversion meaning, um, um, so my undergraduate was in business. I then did a more, um, um, how do you, it's like ICT, right? The information communication technology degree um one year program in, in 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 the nci so it was a higher diploma degree in data analytics um let's see do i okay yeah um and interesting about this actually is i got to um so it was it was funded by a program called springboard i believe it is and 90 percent of the tuition fees were actually covered so depending on the type of area of study that you want to do in there's the they may it may be that there's funding for it, which is great. And I remember there was quite a number of international students also in my class. And um, as far as I can remember, now this needs to be definitely double checked. But I think the only I think the major requirement is that you ha you have to spend at least maybe three years, I believe. But um, this definitely needs to be double checked. But again, it's a great opportunity, and there was a lot of international students doing it, so um, it's possible. I mean, I went from business to 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 a data analytics program, which is it's quite nice. I think there's. It just shows you that there's possibilities um, to do that. So a um, little bit about my work experience and just to refer to Brock's uh, in presentation as well. Dublin is home of any any large tech company you can think of. They have a, uh, a hub in in in, uh, in Dublin, like really just if you're just thinking, OK, does, does Airbnb have one there? Does, does Facebook and uh, it will be yes for all of them. I'm, so, I'm certain there's, there's a lot anyway. Um, so when I was a student, I had the experience of working in the offices in um, in Facebook and, and also on Twitter. And there's a picture of me while I was working. Um, 
yeah, it's a funny picture. So uh, yeah, it's um, it just shows you that. I mean, D Dublin has some interesting experience, um, like workplaces, right? So I thought it'd be interesting to also include this, just because I was quite involved in the startup scene, let's say in Dublin. Um, I um, so there's quite there's, there's a lot of programs out there um, supporting entrepreneurs and people who want to build their own businesses. I mean, there's there's I, I only shared just a few, but there's there's really a lot. I, I don't even know how many exactly, but there's a lot. And um, so I did a, a program with DCU. Uh, in fact, I didn't include the logo here, but it's it's called the Ryan Academy. But that um, that picture towards the right, where I'm presenting uh, Bunko Aid, the project, that's um, that's um, that's through the the Ryan Academy, so the, the entrepreneurship program on behalf of DCU. So um, it was like a month. It was like a summer program. We were um, we we had to attend lectures or not lectures, like they're more like workshops. Um, by like industry leaders, um, and they were basically coaching us on how to develop a, a, uh, a an online business. Um, so that's how this project was born, Bunk Away. And then eventually, I applied for these two other programs as well: New Frontiers and Ireland's Young uh, Ireland's Best Young. Whoops, Ireland's Best. I just can't see it. One second. Or Ireland's Best Young Entrepreneur. Okay. Yeah, and um, through this program, we received some funding and then we were further able to develop our, our business idea. And just to give you um, a background as to what Bunkway was, it was a, um, a marketplace platform, so similar to um, Airbnb, which allowed um, international students to book rooms with host families here in Dublin, but for a longer uh, period of time. So it was for longer stay um, as opposed to the short term stay. And then um, eventually we got involved in New Frontiers program as well. And in fact, um, it was actually in TU, TU Dublin, Grange Gorman, where the uh, workshops were held. And um, that was, again, like um, evening uh, workshops where students or uh, um, participants were able to get, again, um, um, advice from uh, different experts in the field. So that comes to the conclusion of my... Um, I'm not sure if I went over time or not, but... so. Q and A. I'm actually we are taking at the very end. So now I will just pass you on to the next speaker. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Mr. Jim, for your experience. I think it was very enlightening uh, presentation through your experience. Now uh, we are shifting to uh, NCI, Mr. Michael, and uh, we are ready for your presentation. Fantastic. Now one minute, uh, until I will. Uh, start your presentation here. I'll just say next slide when you're when I want it to go forward, if that's okay. Just one minute. I'm trying to access the, your presentation, actually. Yeah. All right, I got it. Let me share the screen. Thank you. OK, can, can you put it up on? Oh, super. Um, so uh, my name is Michael Galvin. I am the regional manager looking after Africa, Middle East for the National College of Ireland. I apologize. I don't have my, my video working today. I'm in a, on a, a different part of the country. And my, for some reason, the, uh, the video function has malfunctioned on me. Um, so if you're tuning in from, from East Africa, Habari Yasubuhi, uh, good morning. Been there in Tanzania a couple of times in Dar es Salaam, uh, been in Kenya, Uganda, Rwanda, um, and we do we do have students coming in to NCI and Dublin, Ireland, uh, from East Africa, and long 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 tradition of of students coming to the the Isle of Ireland for its good education system, and as Sam just told you, all the opportunities that exist for for students, um, not just uh, socially, educationally, and for for work. 
um, and expanding your career and your and your and your mind um, beyond that. So we're we're uh, we're we're not a gigantic university. We're small. Um, we have specific programs which link into uh, specific industries. So we're we're very strong in, in the business and tech areas, especially technology. Our computing faculty has uh, linkages with faculty members in Stanford, Berkeley, and Cornell University in America. They co-designed our computing programs, both at undergraduate and masters. And we have a center of excellence for cloud computing, data analytics, and fintech in Ireland. Um, I suppose Ireland is, as it was mentioned earlier, Ireland's quite heavy in, in certain areas. So it's very strong in technology. It's known as the Silicon Valley of Europe. So you have the actual Silicon Valley in California and Ireland is the Silicon Valley of Europe. What does that mean? You have a lot of large global uh, technology companies that have um, their European, Middle East and African headquarters there. So it's not just their sole uh, computing um, functionality. They also employ accountants, marketing people, business people, um, and they employ thousands of people in Ireland to service the, the countries that they operate in across the EMEA region. So NCI has specific programs linked in the, to these companies so that when the students, when you get to graduation stage, um, these companies have a pool of talent that they can uh, attract in to work in their companies. So you can see there just on our undergraduate side, you have um, some of the uh, um, computing and, and, and business programs. So like I said, we have very few programs in that area, just accounting and finance, psychology, marketing, business, HRM. They're all three-year programs, three years in duration, um, and computing is a four-year program. So computing has a six-month internship in the third year, and students get to place within one of the global tech companies um, and hopefully maybe go and work with them afterwards. So it's a good opportunity for students to get their experience uh, during term as well. So like you can work part time. A lot of students work part time uh, in Ireland, maybe in, in hospitality related roles. But during the summers, then there's an opportunity to get internships, paid internships during the summer months in, in some of the companies. Gives you um, uh, sort of a, a benefit for your CV. So you can have good um, good employable experience on your CV before you actually graduate and having it like a two page CV with maybe two or three summers of good solid experience gives you a better edge in the employment market. Before the coronavirus, the unemployment rate in Ireland was 4.2%, which basically meant that we had full employment in the Irish economy. And because we have a small population, just shy of 5 million people, um, shy of 5 million people, a very strong education system, um, and a lot of large companies based here. There's great opportunities for students in Ireland. Now, coronavirus has obviously impacted economies around the world. And so, you know, it's going to change the economic indicators slightly. But they reckon that Ireland will recover within the next couple of years, hopefully after the pandemic, and jobs will be quite strong again then. But even in the current pandemic, you can see in some of the jobs sectors in Ireland, especially in technology, there's still loads of job opportunities. So like if you visit www.irishjobs.ie, you can still see there's, there's still active jobs, there's still people um, leaving jobs and, and finding new jobs. And specialist areas, especially in computing fields, um, anything computing related, there's a lot of uh, good jobs in the job market. Um, so our tuition fees are 10,000 euros per year. Uh, like Mark mentioned earlier, you can, you need to pay your first year fee up front um, for NCI. You must pay it up front before you apply for your visa. Um, and then in your second or third year, you can do an installment plan and spread it across the year. We do have some scholarships for, for students at about 20% or 2,000 euros per year. And there's a foundation program um, for one year with our partner college, Dorset College in Dublin. Um, we only have a September start for the undergraduate programs. Um, and that's pretty much the same for most of the universities and colleges in, in Ireland. One or two have an alternative January start for undergraduate 
Um, but we're, we have master's programs with, with a January and September start. Uh, you can go to the next slide there. So we do have a range of master's programs as well. Um, masters in different business areas, you can see on the slide there and in, in computing. Like I said earlier, there's um, strong linkages with universities in, in the States who helped um, co-develop the data analytics cloud computing program. Probably the most two popular programs that we have at master's level at NCI. There's 100% graduate employment off these programs. Um, so minimum entry requirements, as you can see there, after your degree, if you're looking at folks in a master's, you need a 2 2 honors degree, either in a, a cognate area or um, they will look at STEM. So sometimes students will do science, technology, engineering, or maths degree, and then want to, you know, might have done some computer programming modules and might want to focus into a, a specific master's. And we have some good scholarships on the master's as well. We have a future leader scholarship program, which awards up to 50% off the fees for students who have a first class honors degree. So if you study well in your undergraduate degree and you want to progress into doing a master's program, there's some good scholarship uh, programs there. Uh, you can go to the next slide. So we have some international um, ratings by QS stars. They come in and reviewed our campus, very strong in internationalization and employment. Get the next slide, please. So, like Sam was saying, there's opportunities um, to, to engage in um, sort of real life case studies and things with when you're in college, uh, but also for afterwards, these are some of the big, bigger companies. Some you may know, some are Irish banks or Irish companies, but like to Google, Microsoft, Amazon, et cetera, all have large bases in Ireland and they employ a lot of people. They take in skilled people, graduates, experienced people, unexperienced people, um, but they do want to see at least a minimum graduate with a 2-2 honors degree. Some want 2-1, some want first class, some go for the, uh, the best students they can find, and some will take a balanced uh, approach in. So there's various graduate programs that students can go in and they usually train everyone up from scratch, but um, you know, obviously coming here to study, do as best as you can in your degree academically, try and gain some experience. And the social side of college is very important as well. Meeting new friends and um, maybe playing sports, getting active in societies. Why? Because uh, Irish people like to see that. If they're looking at your CV, your two page CV, they want to see your education. That's great. They want to see any work experience you have, maybe done some community experience. And if you play sports, they want to see that you're a team player as well. So, you know, if you can show that in different ways, not just in a work setting, so that all contributes in um, to your, being your personal brand, your personal profile when you're applying for these companies. Uh, you can go next slide, please. So average graduate salaries uh, for undergraduates in around sort of 25 to 35,000 euros, depending on what, what you're going into. Um, and for masters, if you have experience, Depends on much experience. Some people do a degree, they might have five years experience, then come and do a master's program. They might be getting up to 80,000 euros in Ireland. So the companies pay good salaries and they've got benefits packages for, for people to going in. So they'll give you good holidays, good annual leave, pension, gym, some have free food and all these weird, wonderful uh, benefits packages that the likes of Google and, and Microsoft and people like that would have. Um, next slide, please. So there's our website down below. It's www.ncirl.ie slash international. I invite you to go and have a look. Just have a look at the, the website. Have a look at the, um, there's some more student testimonials and, and, and more information up there as well. Uh, next slide, please. And uh, next slide. So there are my details as well. Um, if you have any questions, you can WhatsApp me as well on my WhatsApp number or email if you have any specific questions. i also happy to put lecturers or faculty members in touch if you have any specific technical questions that you want answered or you want to talk to um, any of the program uh, program team, um, please feel free to get in touch and happy to uh, explore more information um, 
to share more information with you about NCI or uh, where we're based um, in Dublin in the city centre. So I'll uh, say goodbye and chat to you later. Thanks. Thank you very much for this uh, nice presentation, Mr. Michael. And uh, now the next we are going to the Mr. Arnold. You're welcome. Hey. So Thank we you. are ready for your presentation. Okay, I'm going to share my screen. Okay. Okay, can you see it? Yeah, yes, we can. Okay, perfect. yes, we can. Okay, well, thank you very much for inviting me for this uh, webinar. My name is Arnaud Teissou and I'm working for the Technological University Dublin, which is based obviously in Dublin. Just I'm going to give you a small presentation, a little bit of history of our university and what we do and what opportunity you can have and uh, part of the cost and uh, applications, okay? So, Mostly our history, we are a very, very old university in Ireland and we were created in 1987. Uh, it was uh, called Kelvin Street Technical School and other schools were created in Ireland, Toulouse, Catherine, uh, more technical schools. And we became in 1993 the Dublin Institute of Technology. Uh, what happened, there is a government push also in Ireland. There is, well, there were 15 Institutes of Technology in Ireland and the government here in Ireland want all the Institute of Technology to merge, to become technological universities and it happened in January. Uh, we merged with uh, the Dublin Institute of Technology merged with two other Institute of Technology that are based in Dublin and we became Technological University Dublin. So we are a kind of a new university in the world, but we are still one of the oldest universities here in Ireland. So just to give you this slide is just to give you some ideas about the size that we are. We are the biggest university now. In this country. Uh, we have not far from 29,000 students, we get uh, seven and a half thousand students that are graduating every year. We have courses from our apprenticeship to the foundation program to doctorate program. We are creating 1,700 jobs a year. We have a lot of international students and um, we are right now planning over 500 million Euros investment on a brand new campus in Cornish Common in the city center. There is also a couple of things that I would like to mention. This that uh, I might mention it again after our staff to student ratio. It's about one to twenty students because we want the student to be able to participate. We might be in university, but you won't see a big, big, big places where you have two hundred students that cannot ask questions. That might be a little bit lost. We want our students to be able to participate with the lecturer and be able to say, listen, I don't understand. Listen, can you clarify uh, your comment? Can you uh, explain this a little bit better? We want students to be able to participate in the class and to be successful. So like I have mentioned, that's, uh, that pictures of our new campus that we are building in, in the city center, that's Greenwich Gorman. And uh, it, it's open already for students. There is, uh, we're hoping to have over 10,000 students in this campus between September and January. Just to give you, like I mentioned, that we were created in 1987, we are giving our own degrees award since 1993 because our level of education is very, very good. Uh, we have students from over 100 countries, uh, but 20% of our student population are non-Irish. Uh, we are in the rankings, like everybody can mention rankings, 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 but just what is very, very important for us really is that the success of the student. What we want often, students, when they come to us, they're 18 years old, they think that they're adults, but they're not really adults. We want them to blossom with us. We want them to blossom in their own life and we want them to blossom academically. That's the most important aspect for us because if they grow with us, they'll be able to grow in their own life, get a good job, get a good life after they leave us. So when uh, we became a Technological University Dublin, I had to write kind of a nice about us. What do we stand for? Who are we? And I, I put some few ideas like, you know, and it seems to be a bit, I don't know, like a progression between awards, international based internship, but all what I wrote there is actually true. Uh, all our programs are created for the industry. 
we want our student to get a job. So we go to the industry, we ask them, what will you need? What kind of student will you need in, what kind of graduate will you need in four years time, five years time? And we design program for the industry. All our students have the right to go to study abroad. We have over 100 agreement with international universities in the world. We have over 650 students doing a PhD right now on real life issues. All our career, of, like I mentioned, the career focus program is very important for us, our students to get a job once they finish. About 50% of our students have paid work placement. So all what I wrote there is actually true. Yeah, I didn't just write it to look good. So what program do we have? in uh, my uh, university. We have one year international foundation program. It starts in September and January for the foundation program. We have also for people that don't have an excellent English, we have a bridging English program for eight weeks over the summer. Then we have like in a lot of university in Ireland, we have programs that last two years, three years. Then the honors degree programs that are three to four years. We have some top up honors program in limited number, plus we have master degree program that usually last a year. And we also have master research program two years and then they can finish by a PhD if they want to. I mentioned a bit, uh, it's another area that I wanted to mention there about Technological University Dublin. Like I said, we work really for the students. I mentioned 50% of our students have at least paid work placement. 85% get a job when they finish with we have a carrier's office that will be there to help you to find a job. They even create seminars, especially for international students. For example, writing a CV in some countries is not the same way of writing a CV in these countries. And they can do, like I said, up to one year international exchange. If you come to study in undergraduate with us, if you want to go for one year in France or Germany or America, we'll try to find a place for you. What also I like about this university is that 50% of our staff come from the industry. So they know what they're talking about. We have ongoing consultancy. Like I mentioned, we're going to the industry to be involved in the design and delivery of our program. And something that was mentioned in the previous presentation also, we love our entrepreneurs. We will help you to set up your own business if you want to open a business. We have licensing technology, we'll find funding for you. We'll have a monitoring aspect for you to be a successful entrepreneur. Now, what do we do? Like I say we are the biggest university in Ireland. We have four main co uh, colleges, art and tourism, business, in engineering and build environment, and the College of Science and Health. And within those four colleges, there is 28 schools. And the 28 schools run not far from 200 different programs. Will it be in law? Could it be in engineering, architecture, pharmaceutical science, computing, food technology, planning, transport, management, marketing, law, languages, tourism? So there is a huge, huge choice of programs that you can uh, study in my university. And uh, if you want more information about specific programs, of course, you can contact me. Now, the admission requirements, it's like a uh, a lot of university here in Ireland, the admission, the application are made online and it's free to apply. You will need for every admission to have a passport, your transcripts, your diplomas, and we'll ask for an English proficiency certificate. We know that you speak English here in a lot of countries, but it will be compulsory when you apply for a visa because there is, the visa office has one rule for every country in the world. So if you come from Peru, or China, or Russia, or Kenya, you will need to provide an English proficiency certificate. But like I mentioned, what is very important for us, I mentioned it earlier on, is that the student can blossom with us. So we have a lot of areas within our university that the students have access to. Like for example, we have two students health centers in the city campus. That means that we have doctors and nurses that are available by appointment and the consultation is free. We have counseling services, we have sports society, we have students union, we have a disability support service. 
So if you find yourself maybe a bit afraid of going because you have dyslexia or because you're on a wheelchair, we'll be there to help you. We even have a lady in our office called the International Student Experience Officer. This lady will be here to take care of your welfare. If you have any issue, any problems, she'll be here to help you. I mentioned the careers office that will help you to find a job. Okay, we have 120 clubs and societies, 120 clubs and societies. And I put some of them, they are available, dance, swimming, music, soccer, but it will be also a Gaelic sport. There will be a scuba diving, sailing, uh, basketball, like uh, all the sports that you can think of, but it will be also drama, circus, jungling society, theater, cinema. And we want you to make friends. Join a club and society. Join a club and society costs you two euros. And it will be a way for you to make friends, to discover the city, try some uh, activities. It's a way for you to get fit and healthy. And, uh, and you'll be able to, to, uh, to compete against other universities just for fun. Like, it's, a fun it's a fun thing to do. And John Club and Society, I think it's very good also for, for your own, and it will be also very good for your CV. Tuition fees, it really depends what you want to study. Our tuition fee goes between 11,000 and 34,500 euros. The average cost of a program in my university is 14,000 euros. We ask for two installments. The first installment is to secure your place. We want half of the fees. That's what you need to apply for a visa. We won't ask for the balance until the beginning of the second semester. The visa to Ireland, but so you just need to apply for visa to Ireland. Like in East Africa, we are quite lucky that we have offices in four different countries that where well, you can apply it for visa instead of sending all your documents to Dublin. It'd be in Kenya, Ethiopia, Tanzania, and Uganda. And once you get uh, the visa, you arrive to Ireland, and they will give you a three month stay. And then you have to register with the immigration office where you get your two year uh, stay in Ireland. Like what we, what we ask you to do when you arrive in Ireland, you just come to say, come to see me, come to say hello. Say, hi, Arlo, I'm very happy, I'm coming from this country. We'll organize an orientation for you. We'll help you to get your student card to register with immigration office. We'll help you to open a bank account. We'll help, uh, help you to get a social security number for you to get a job as, uh, as soon as possible. And uh, uh, all, all of this has been mentioned before. In Ireland, we speak English. Worldwide recognition of qualifications. If you come to study in Ireland, you can stay. You can stay working in Ireland, but if you want to go to America, back to your country, go to Dubai, China, Korea, Australia, our qualifications are recognized internationally. Uh, it was mentioned also that you get a year working visa after an undergraduate program, after your bachelor degrees, but you also get a two years working visa after a postgraduate degrees. Just a little slide about the weather that I like. It's never too cold in Ireland, but it's never too warm. And it's a very temperate uh, climate that we have here. And that's it. Thank you very much. Here are my contacts. If you want to contact me, have any question, if you want to talk to a specific member of staff in a specific area, I will make the introduction and I'll be more than happy to talk to you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Arnold. This uh, was a very enlightening presentation. Um, we are going to have the questions right now. I think the students and we have some questions concerning the study in uh, Ireland. And Mr. Mehmet, can we share the uh, questions? Uh, sure, let me share it. Do you see my screen? Yeah, it's coming. Yeah, do you have interviews during the admission process? So this goes to the two universities. I think Mr. Arnold, you can take this one and then we can ask this uh, to the Mr. Michael as well. Okay, in general, no, we don't ask for interviews during the admission process except for a couple of specific programs. 
the specific program will be a political communication, a master of political communication, and we'll also ask for interview on a bachelor in architecture, but the rest, okay. there is no interview whatsoever. Uh, we may organize interviews if we are very oversubscribed in a program to see really what is the intent of the student to come to Ireland. But for 95% of our programs, there is no interviews. Okay, thank you. Mr. Michael? Mr. Michael, do you have any interview for your programs? Uh, I think Michael is just disconnected, um, so I can take okay. this, uh, I can take this yes, question. Right. Um, so there is no need for interview for NCI as well. Students just need to submit the required documents and it will be reviewed in uh, three to four weeks. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Bra. I graduation, do you have any advice for me? 12th year? year 12 so for those students who has still one year to graduate from the high school what is your advice for them uh, so Brad, maybe you can answer this yeah question. i can give some uh, answer as well as arnold mentioned so the students definitely need an uh, english competency to study in ireland so uh, the student can get benefit this final year um, to increase their uh, English level, as well as they can make their mind in terms of what they want to study. And we, I already shared on the chat the jobs.ie, so they can check the available job opportunities in Ireland, even their salaries, and try to find the best uh, career opportunities for them. Okay, uh, I can add one question to this. Uh, actually, the universities didn't mention any certain level of English proficiency examinations like IELTS, like uh, TOEFL, or the now the new one is Duolingo. Uh, what is the minimum uh, scores from those international uh, English proficiency exams? Okay, I'm going to take over for this one. It really okay. depends on what program you want to uh, study. Most of the university, I'm talking about Ireland in general, most of the mm -hmm. will require the six in IELTS. For, Six in IELTS. Yeah. For do you funding, accept the Duolingo? We do accept only this year. Only this year. Only this year. What is the minimum score? I just, the truth, I don't remember it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, I have it. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't remember it. No problem. But there is equivalency online. You can check them online. Okay. So then. Also, for the foundation program, usually, we will be looking, university in Ireland, not just me, will be looking for about five in Isles. Mm -hmm. And uh, usually for master, we'll be looking for 6.5 in Isles. But ah, again, okay. there is some difference within some university. Like for example, one of my master, I will be looking for seven in Isles because it's a journalism. Mm, in journalism. In journalism, for example. Oh. Uh, actually, a lot of masters where there is more labs than uh, I might be looking also for six in Isles, but I gave you the average in Ireland. Okay. Like everybody will have their, uh, some here and there, but I mentioned what will be the average in Ireland at the moment, okay? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I can um, add one more point yeah. here, uh, Mr. Ahmed. So it's Duolingo score is 95 to 100 equals to 6.0 in IELTS. Well, thank you and, very much, Mr. Brock, for this information. And I also just um, shared the link that students can test their English at the um, uh, Duolingo website for free. Oh, okay, for free. This is just a test, not a certificate, test. but they can just uh -huh. see their level. Oh, okay, good. Very nice. Um, do you have medicine courses? If yes, how long it, is it? And what is its acceptance in all around the world? Accreditation, I think it's mentioning about and duration. Um, yeah, I can take this question as well. Yes, there are, I think, two big uh, medicine uh, school in Ireland. So it, it takes six years um, for the initial, uh, like a bachelor degree at the medicine. Uh, and then if you want, you can go for prof proficiency as well. And so we have an exam in every February. It's called HPAT. 
I don't know what it stands for, but something like health related um, exam. It takes place in February for the September intake. The course fee is like around 30,000 euro uh, per year and uh, it is accepted all around the world. Oh, thank you very much. Next question. Do you have a work placement in the last year of university? Does someone get paid during his or placement? Yeah, and I think this is a kind of career uh, counseling office of the universities. Mr. Arnold? Yeah, I'm going to answer. Usually we don't do the work placement in the last year. Usually, mm -hmm. we do the work, well, it depends on the, pro again, it depends on the programs. But in general, on a four year degrees, we'll do the work placement on the third year. Some mm -hmm. that we have, for example, in social science, it's a full honors degree that lasts three years, will be asked to do a work placement half of the year, every year. Mm -hmm. If you are doing culinary arts, you'll be on work placement most of the time too. But in general, it is done in the third year of a, pro of a four year program, not on the last year. And yet we try to get paid work placement for everybody. It is not guaranteed, but we try to get paid work placement, yes. Okay. Thank you. Next deadline for TOEFL IELTS exams will be almost late for the application of most universities. What would one do in that case where the exams are required and the time is a major setback? I think this uh, question can be answered by the solution of Duolingo is an online test. But uh, I would like to ask about this one. Ireland, for the visa issues, do they ask the IELTS score or not? Because for UK visas, they do. IELTS UK VI is a must. Yeah, they do. They do need to show their uh, English proficiency as well during the visa application. But Duolingo will be sufficient at this scenario. Oh, that's good. So the currently since the IELTS is not conducted here and uh, they can choose the option of Duolingo. Do you provide online educations for those who cannot travel to Ireland due to the COVID-19? Yes, Mr. Arnold. Okay, it's a difficult uh, question to answer. Yes and no. Uh, all our program will be available online, but we are trying to get as many students as we can on campus and as many students as it is safe to do so because studying in a university abroad, it's also a question of the experience. It's a question of coming to the city, it's a question of coming to the country and make local friends. Most of our program this year will be a blended experience between online and on campus. And most of the campus teaching, the priority will be for the first year student coming to Ireland or from Irish student coming to university for the first time. So we will expect you to be there Maybe if, even if it's two or three hours a week on campus. Thank you. Uh, I can add one more point here as yeah. well. So Dublin City University is also announced uh, for the September uh, semester. It will be 100% online, but uh, they don't know much more about the second semester after January. Mm -hmm. So the Dublin City University is going to conduct all the courses online. Yes, for the first semester, for sure, 100%. Okay, okay good. Next question. Okay, I will take over. I know for NCI, it's still open because uh, my, I, don't, I think Michael has some um, issue with his uh, connection. Yes, for NCI, it's still open. And for us, it is still open if the program is not already oversubscribed. So if we still have room on the program, yes, you can make an application. But uh, however, I would suggest knowing that the start date is the 21st of September for us, that you make the application nearly in the next two weeks to give you the time to pay your fees, the time to apply for a visa, the time to find flights to come to Ireland. You know, uh, it will take about two, three weeks to get a visa, but then you have to take in place a the payment will take an extra week, maybe to organize the payment and getting all your paper together and then making the application, booking your flight. It can take a month and a half and we want you to be there on time to study with us. So they will- uh, when, the, 
when the studies are uh, starting in the university, Mr. Andrut. Sorry? When the uh, classes resume in the university in fall semester? For me, it's at the 21st of September. 21st September. Okay. So you need nearly a month and a half to organize, uh, to organize mm -hmm. uh, you know, all the paperwork. So, yeah. so our application system is still open if we have room on the program. Before the end of July, uh, application. Yeah, by the end of July, be, yeah, it should be finished yeah. because you won't have the time to do all the paperwork after. And, uh, exactly. It's appointment for everybody, for yourself and ourselves. So, mm -hmm. thank you. Yeah, I can plus one to Arnold as well in terms of a visa application. We strongly recommend a, a students to um, apply for the course as soon as possible. But uh, based on the availability, some universities show um, some flexibility, even though the um, the application date is uh, expired. So yeah, feel free to um, reach us if you have a specific student and we can double check with the universities. Okay, thank you, Mr. Brack. Does anyone qualify for scholarship, which is mentioned by Mr. Michael, when he or she gets admission? I think Mr. Michael is not. Yeah, I think he lost his connection, yeah. but I can I can uh, respond to this question. Yes, based on the GPA scores, basically high uh, high school diploma results. Uh, last year, a couple of our students get the scholarship. Okay, good. In which class of university we do internship? Uh, I think Jim can take this one. Yes, Mr. Jim. Yes, yes, yes. So generally, um, it's in your third year. Now, I did an exchange program during my undergraduate, which was replaced by the internship, but generally it would happen also in your third year. Third year. So, mm -hmm. Okay. Is there any difference between three years bachelor degree and four years bachelor degree if a university offer both? Which one is advisable to join? Okay, I'm going to answer this one. There is a, a qualification in Ireland. They go from higher certificate to bachelor degree to honors bachelor degree. A bachelor degree and an honors bachelor degree is not the same. A bachelor degree is called a level seven. It's three years after your living certificate, your high school diploma. And the, uh, what the honors bachelor degrees can be three or four years, but make sure it's an honors bachelor degrees. It is a level eight, and that's a level eight that you will need if you want to continue to do a master. So you have to it makes a difference between a bachelor degree and an honors bachelor degree. I see. Next question. Is there any type of racism in the country? Yeah, most of our students, they uh, wonder about the, this racism and discrimination issues because of the color issue maybe. Uh, is there uh, such a risk in the Ireland? I can share my own experience. So I have been in, living in Ireland for almost 11 years. I am like originally from Turkey. So I am from very different culture and background. I am Muslim from different religion. To be honest, like I haven't experienced any single racism, like because I'm Turkish or because I'm Muslim. To be honest, uh, as I mentioned during my presentation, like the Irish people are like super friendly and um, welcoming um, uh, people from different backgrounds and culture. I don't know, uh, maybe Jem can also, I don't know, at some points here. Um, I mean, what I can just say is from simple observation is that I've never, especially in, in the universe, university setting, I, I've never um, witnessed any form of racism. Um, I think um, I would say generally in university students will be very open, very open-minded and very uh, welcoming. And so, I mean, I, I've never witnessed any form of racism, I would say. Can I, can I add something? Yes, sir. Our last, because uh, we just had a change of government, our last prime minister in Ireland, Leo Varadkar, is a child of mixed race. And he was at the higher office in the country. 
that just to give you an example that uh, racism is so rare here, so rare. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Ahmed, wait, nice I, have a, yes. I have a, um, like a graph um, regarding the previous question that uh, Arnold just explained. Maybe I can quickly share my screen and show that levels, if it will be helpful. Yeah. The, the previous question. Um, so, okay. So as you can see here, we have ordinary bachelor degree here, which mm -hmm. is level seven. And so basically university degrees start with seven. And then mm -hmm. we have eight for the honor bachelor degree. If you would like to continue your master degree, postgraduate degree, as Arnold mentioned, you need to get minimum eight. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. This was a good graphic. Does the universities help students to get job both during their education and after their graduation? I think we have somehow explained this question. The university, they do give consultation and uh, help to students, uh, but it is not guaranteed also. Am I correct, Mr. Brack? Yes, you are definitely correct. Like this, the schools organize like career fairs. I think Jem mm -hmm. may like uh, share again her, like his uh, experience during his experience. final year. Yeah, um, just um, I guess NCI, the, the last the institute where I studied, um, they are incredibly helpful, actually, I must admit. Um, and they're still contacting me, asking me how I'm getting on. And um, if I, so they will, it's been, um, I think, um, almost six months since I left, and, and they're still willing to actually help me find a job if, um, yeah, if I'm seeking. So, yeah, definitely very helpful. And DC was also very helpful. That's great. For the universities, uh, also still keeping in touch with their students after six months graduation. That's great, actually. I think the, all the questions we have, this is over. And thank you very much for your co uh, cooperation and uh, also information and the nice presentation and, and for your valuable time. I hope in future we can uh, work hand to hand and uh, we can guide a lot of students, as I said that at the beginning, the, in East Africa, Ireland is a very less known country. What I see here and the school fee structures, opportunities, scholarship opportunities as well, when it is uh, become widely known, I think the number of students will increase who would like to come to Ireland. Thank you very much again for your time.